All right, everybody, this is just a continuation of the prior uh, section we covered. Slope and uh, rate of change considered algebraically. Uh, we had basically talked about the limit definition of the derivative, and then we got into the power rule and did several uh, examples of that. This is really just continuing on with the power rule. Um, so I'm just going to go straight into the examples here. Um, so find the derivative for 9x squared minus 0.6 plus 5x cubed. Okay, so we'll use the notation g prime of x to indicate derivative. Uh, you've got your power rule on the first term. 9 times 2 is 18. That'll be x to the first. The second term, negative 0.6, is a number. So remember in the last uh, lesson we said the derivative of any number is 0. So I could write plus 0 here. But in math, we typically don't write plus zero. So I'm just not going to write that. And then go on again to the power rule for the last term. So the derivative of 5x cubed is 15x squared. Okay. Uh, same thing again here for number two. Um, mainly just using the power rule. Derivative of three is zero, so that's gone. The derivative of a negative 6x to the 4th would be negative 24x cubed. The derivative of 7x cubed would be 21x squared. The derivative of 9x to the 5th would be 45x to the 4th. Okay. All right, let's move on down. Uh, I've got fractional coefficients in number three, but it doesn't change what you do. Um, so let's just go to it. Um, think about negative two-thirds times two, negative four-thirds. That'll be x to the first. Derivative of negative six x to the fourth will be negative 24 x cubed. Derivative of negative six will be zero. And then your last term. Uh, derivative of 3 fourths x to the fifth, so 3 fourths times 5, 3 times 5 is 15, so 15 fourths x to the fourth. Alright, and number four, uh, we've got fractional exponents this time. So remember when you um, subtract one from the exponent, say one fourth, what I told you in the last video is take the top number minus the bottom number, one minus four is negative three, and then the denominator will stay the same. You're basically subtracting one from the exponents. You see this was the quick way to do it. Same thing there with five halves. Uh, five minus two is three, and the denominator stays the same. That's going to be our new exponents. Okay, so, f prime of x, negative 3 times a fourth is negative 3 fourths, and then 1 fourth minus 1 was negative 3 fourths, so we have x to negative 3 fourths. Okay, next term, 9 times 5 halves, 9 times 5 is 45, so it'll be 45 halves. x to the 5 halves minus 1 would be 3 halves. Derivative of negative 2 is 0. Okay. So questions 1 through 4, it's literally just what you were doing in the last section. It's just you have more terms in the problem. you got 3, 4, 5 terms on some of them. Uh, and the problems here is where most of the problems in the previous section just had one term. Okay. Um, in number 5... <clears throat> Use algebraic techniques to rewrite the function uh, f of x equal 2x squared plus 5 times 5x squared plus 2 as a sum or difference, then find the derivative. Okay, so the reason they're saying use algebraic techniques to rewrite this is because it's not currently in a form that you could use the power rule. Just to remember real quick, remember the power rule was when you had a function of the form x to the r. 
if you look at this x here, it's not multiplied by any other x's, it's not divided by any other x's. So if you look at this, we've got x in this parenthesis, and it's being multiplied by another x in this parenthesis over here. So you have multiplication of x's going on here. That doesn't fit the power rule. So when they say use algebraic techniques to rewrite this, they're basically telling you you've got to multiply it out before you can apply the power rule. Okay, so let's multiply it out. Okay, so let's start with 2x squared, multiply that through uh, 5x squared plus 2. So 2x squared times 5x squared is 10x to the fourth. 2x squared times 2 is 4x squared. And then let's take our next term, 5, and multiply it through by 5x squared plus 2. 5 times 5x squared is 25x squared, and 5 times 2 is 10. Uh, go ahead and combine any like terms you might have. So in this case, we have a couple of different x squareds. 4x squared and 25x squared add up to 29x squared. All right, so after you have this multiplied out, now it looks you know, like question 1 or question 2 up here. It's just going to be power rule with, with different terms. Okay, so now you're able to go ahead and do the power rule. So 10 times 4 is 40x cubed. 29 times 2 is going to be what? 58. That'll be x to the first. Derivative of 10 is 0. Derivative of any number 0. So there we go. So the idea is, since you had multiplication of x's going on in this function, you have to multiply it out first, then you can apply the power rule. Alright, same thing here with number 6. I've got something with x right here being multiplied into all this stuff, which has x in it as well. So I've got multiplication of x's. So I'm going to have to multiply this out. Now, I had mentioned previously um, in the last section, if you had radical signs, go ahead and change those over to exponents. In calculus, we don't like radical signs. So before I do anything, let's change the fourth root of x here to x to the one-fourth. Okay? So that's written as an exponent. Times 7x to the eleven-fourths minus 6x to the 15 fourths uh, plus 3. Alright, so just like the last problem now, we need to multiply out before we can apply the power rule. So remember, when you're multiplying variables, you need to add the exponents together. So x to the 1 fourth times 7x to the 11 fourth would be 7x to the 1 fourth plus 11 fourths is 12 fourths, which is actually 3, right? 12 over 4 is 3. Okay. Let's go to the next term. x to the 1 fourth times negative 6x to the 15 fourths. That'll be negative 6x to the 1 fourth plus 15 fourths is 16 fourths. Of course, 16 over 4 is just 4, so minus 6x to the fourth. And then don't forget your last term over here, x to the 1 fourth times 3 is 3x to the 1 fourth. And that doesn't simplify, so 3x to the 1 fourth. Okay, and you've got it multiplied out, so now you can do the derivative. Um, I'm going to write dy dx here for derivative. 7 times 3 is 21, so this will be 21x squared. Negative 6 times 4 is negative 24 x cubed. Uh, 3 times 1 fourth is 3 fourths x to the 1 fourth minus 1. Okay, so again, what did I tell you to do? Take the top number 1 minus the top number 4, that's negative 3. Denominator stays the same, so it'll be negative 3 fourths uh, for our exponent here. Okay. So, same thing as the last question, they just threw these 
uh, basically fractional exponents in here just to make it uglier. But you're doing the same thing. You're multiplying it out first, and then you're doing the power rule. So questions five and six both dealt with multiplication of x's. It's going to be the same argument with division of x's. So like, say look at number seven here. I've got some x's on top, and I've got some an x on bottom. The way the uh, power rule was originally written, it dealt with things in the form x to the r. So notice, that's on top. There's nothing down here. There's no x's down on bottom. x is not divided by other x's. So, likewise, we've got to rewrite this in a way where we don't have division by x. We want no multiplication or division of x's, basically. All right, I'm going to change my radical sign over to an exponent. Negative 7x to the 5 fourths minus 8x to the 21 fourths minus 5 over 4th root of x is x to the 1 fourth. Okay, um, if you're going to simplify this, to me, the easiest thing to do is to break it into separate fractions. You can think of x to the 1 fourth as a common denominator. So you'd have negative 7x to the 5 fourths divided by x to the 1 fourth. You'd have negative 8x to the 21 fourths divided by x to the 1 fourth. And you'd have negative 5 divided by x to the 1 fourth. Okay, so when you multiplied variables, you added the exponents. When you divide variables, you subtract the exponents. So let's simplify a little bit here. In your first term, you got negative 7 over 1, so I still got that negative 7. Then I have x to the 5 fourths over x to the 1 fourth. Well, 5 fourths minus 1 fourth is 4 fourths, which is 1. So I just have x to the first there. Okay. And the second term, negative 8 over 1 is still negative 8. I have x to the 21 fourths over x to the 1 fourth. So I want to do 21 fourths minus a fourth, which is 20 fourths, which is 5. Okay, I don't know why that didn't write, but there we go. Okay, there we go. All right, so I've got negative 8x to the fifth. All right, and then your last term, uh, there's nothing to cancel out. There's no x on top to cancel with this x on bottom. Um, still remember to use the power rule, x had to be on top. So we can take x to the 1 fourth, shove it up to the numerator, uh, and make it x to the negative 1 fourth. Okay, at that point, we can go ahead and use the power rule now. So g prime of x, the root of a negative 7x will be negative 7. The root of a negative 8x to the fifth will be negative 40x to the fourth. And the root of a negative 5x to the negative 1 fourth, negative a negative is positive. 5 times a fourth is 5 fourths x to the negative one-fourth minus one will be negative five-fourths. So remember, take the top, negative one, minus the bottom, four, negative one minus four is the negative five. The denominator stays the same. Okay. And then we've got one little word problem here, um, finding the slope of the tangent line. So when we first talked about derivative in the last section, um, I told you basically what we had was um, converting the average rate of change formula 
to instantaneous rate of change, which meant uh, getting a slope at a single point. Okay, so if you hear the term instantaneous rate of change, you know you're talking about derivatives. A tangent line is a line that touches the graph, touches the graph at exactly one point, specifically when x equals two in this case. So the slope of that line is the same as saying the instantaneous rate of change at x equal two. So this question says find the slope of the tangent line at x equal two. It would be done exactly the same way if it said find the instantaneous rate of change at x equals two. It's the same thing. So we're gonna need to get our derivative. So derivative of three x to the fourth is 12 x cubed. Derivative of 140 x is 140. The derivative of 321 is zero, so that's gone. So there's our derivative, 12 x cubed plus 140. To get the instantaneous rate of change or the slope of the tangent line as they're calling it here, uh, at x equal two, just means you plug two into that derivative. So let's calculate that. Um, let's see, 12 times two cubed. Um, plus uh, 140 is 236. Okay. So don't make that out to be harder than it is. It's still telling you to do a derivative, do the power rule like you've been doing. It's just you've got a, a value to plug into that derivative at the end.